Hello class. Today we are going to review general terms when discussing radiographic procedures. The first set of terms pertain to the skeletal system itself. As we all know, the average adult has approximately 206 bones. These bones are broken up into two categories. So we have the appendicular skeleton, which is outlined in the blue, and that actually contains 126 bones. It is made up by the upper and the lower extremities. The axial skeleton has 80 bones, which is indicated in the white area here, and it includes the bones of the head, the face, the spinal column, and the bony thorax, which includes the sternum. The next thing we're going to talk about is the anatomical position. This is when the patient is standing erect, facing forward with their head face forward, and their palms of the hands are also facing forward as indicated here and here. When looking at this patient, we reference the shoulder to be more superior than the hand. Superior refers to closer to the head. Distal refers closer to the feet. Therefore, the foot is more distal than the hand. The hand is more distal than the shoulder. The elbow is more superior than the hand. All right, moving on with our terminology, we're going to talk about general body positions. Now, when we're talking about a patient laying on their back on the table, that is known as the supine position, which is indicated right here, the supine position. If the patient were to flip over and be lying on their stomach, that is known as the prone position, which is this picture right here. If we're talking at about a patient who is in the Trendelenburg position, that indicates that the patient's head is lower than the patient's feet. That's Trendelenburg, T-R-E-N-D-E-L-E-N-B-U-R-G, Trendelenburg position. If we're discussing the patient in a Fowler position, that means that the patient's head is higher than the patient's feet. That is the Fowler position. F-O-W-L-E-R. When we talk about the patient being in a recumbent position, that means that the patient is lying in any position. Recumbent could be dis discussing supine, recumbent could be talking about prone, recumbent could be talking about Trendelenburg or Fowler. So recumbent isn't as specific of a positioning term as the other ones. We can also have the upright or erect position. The erect position is indicated here, also known as the anatomical position. You remember that, right? The upright position doesn't necessarily have to be an erect position. If a patient is seated in a chair, as I am, that is considered an upright position as well. Finally, a different way of pointing out a general body position is the patient to be seated in a chair, on a stool, seated on the table. That is also a seated and upright position. 